Thank you for joining me. I hope you're having a good day. We're going to look at the account as Elijah goes up by the whirlwind and you have the vision of the chariot of God. It comes from 2 Kings, but before we get to that, today's hymn is the hymn Higher Ground. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound, Lord plant my feet on higher ground. Lord lift me up and let me stand, by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Let's look at our passage now. 2 Kings chapter 2. And um, since our last study, since our study yesterday, you might think about Ahab has since passed. At the end of 1 Kings, there's actually a short time where Ahab repented. But Ahab has since passed, and it's time for Elijah being taken to heaven. 2 Kings 2 1. It came to pass when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Bethel. As the Lord lives, Elisha said, As the Lord lives, as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel, and it's somewhat of a humorous account in this aspect, in this respect, that as they go, the sons of the prophets, they keep saying, do you know the Lord's taking away your master today? And he says, yes, I know, keep silent. And it happens again in Jericho, yes, I know, keep silent. Verse 6, Elijah again says, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to the Jordan. And, of course, Elisha goes with him. Verse 7, And fifty men of the sons of prophets went and stood facing them at a distance, while the two of them stood by the Jordan. Now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water, and it was divided this way and that, so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. So it was, when they had crossed over, that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask, what may I do for you before I am taken away from you? Elisha said, Please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So he said, You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. Then it happened, as they continued on and talked, that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha saw it, and he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. So he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes, tore them in two, and he takes up Elijah's mantle. We'll talk about that tomorrow. But I'm pressing on to higher ground for Elijah. He had said before, when he fled to Mount Horeb, to Sinai, Take my life. But there was still work to do. And I think even as the Lord gave him that work, there's an element, as he says, appoint these three people, if I remember correctly, it's three people, one of them being Elisha. The question is, what happens after that work is done? And now we see our answer. That it's time to go. It's time to go. And that's okay. Sometimes we try to hang on to this world and we forget that this world is not our home. It's just not. You know, when the, the people come looking for Elijah in chapter 1, and let me pu pull it up on, put it up on screen for you. As Moab rebels against Israel after the death of Ahab, and I believe this is the account where they describe Elijah as a hairy man wearing a leather belt around his waist. Well, that was the attire of a prophet, is what that was. And frankly, I guess in a certain way you would say he was meant for this world, because he spoke what needed to be said, but at the same time, 
He was not meant for this world, was he? In, the, in a good sense. In a good sense. And it's time to go. Time to go. This world's not our home. We're just pilgrims. We're just so, sojourners. And so we, we hasten the day. That verse is, comes from Peter's epistle, talking about the day of judgment. But it's as Paul said, better to depart and be with the Lord. And when it's time to go, it's time to go. And as it's time to go, when it's time to go, we need to take comfort in the fact that others, others will carry on. You know, we, we may not see... We, we may not see our work, for, work fulfilled, if I could say it, like we want to. You remember what Jesus tells the disciples? You're entering into other men's labors. John the Baptist had prepared the way. Prophets had prepared the way as well, in a certain sense. And they were entering into other men's labors. Elisha was entering into... Elijah's labors. Others will carry on. So we should take comfort in that. As we, as we go on, we should take comfort that maybe we didn't get everything we wanted to get done done. Others will have to... That'll, that'll give others the opportunity to pick up where we left off. And that's exactly what Elisha does. I was reading the passage... And did you notice, let me look back in chapter 2, pardon me. Especially verse 11. Then it happened as they continued on and talked. What do you think they talked about? What do you think they talked about? You know, our, our conversations... Our, our talk, our speech. And thinking about the hymn, I'm pressing on to higher ground. You know, after the Lord's resurrection, he spoke to the disciples. What did he speak to them about? Our conversation should... We should speak the things that are good for edification. Sometimes all we talk about is just the most mundane things in the world that don't amount to a hill of beans. When it's all said and done, it just doesn't matter. People talk about the weather. People talk about what's happening in Washington. People talk about what's happening with their favorite sports team. Whatever. We just talk about stuff. What do you think Elijah and Elisha talked about? They probably talked about something a little more important than stuff. And I would just suggest that when we, when we talk to our family, when we talk to our friends, when we talk to our brethren, when we talk to unbelievers, we should talk about something more than just stuff. We should talk about matters that pertain to godliness. Appreciate you. Hope you have a good day. Join us tomorrow for another portion of our daily praise.